Hi, I'm Ella, and welcome to another Dice Tower Preview. Today, I'm very excited to be popping the cork off Dompierre. Dompierre is brought to us by design duo Luis Costa and Jose Rola Santos. It's a game for 2-4 to four players, ages 12 and up, and takes about half an hour per player to play. Please remember this is a paid promotion, and everything you see here is in prototype form. In Dompierre, you and your friends will be taking the role of champagne makers in the 17th and 18th centuries, hoping to build up the prestige of your new bubbly wine, both locally around Europe, as well as all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. I love games with interesting and meaty decisions, and Dompierre has so many. But before I tell you why, I'm quickly going to run through each of the six actions you can choose to do on your turn. Your board shows the six actions here, and this first is a vineyard action. If you choose to do this action on your turn, you get to take grapes out of this bag and place them on the board. This gives you harvest styles for wine that go straight into your presses. The second action option is the cellar which lets you turn everything in one of those presses, such as those harvest tiles, into barrels and bottles of bubbles. The village is the third action, which lets you collect a bunch of things like accessories, gold card bonuses, or even more harvest tiles for your presses. Fourth is logistics, which gives you more workers that you can allocate to various locations all over the main board, and your own. Without those workers, a lot of the actions in the game simply don't work. Fifth is sales, where you can sell the champagne you made in your presses. This gives you money and victory points, but even more importantly, it gets the champagne out of your presses so you can make more. The final action option is Goals, which lets you take a gold card that will give you victory points for fulfilling it. Now I sort of lied a bit because there is one final option, which is to pass and lay off a worker. It returns a worker from any board back to the supply, but it gives you a coin, so sometimes it just has to be done. Okay, now we get to the heart of Dompierre, this wonderful champagne board here. Everyone gets their own board and it shows all the action options for your turn, but it's so much more than that. Whenever you take an action, you move your action disc in the column of that action up like this. This might not seem like a big deal, but it's a huge deal. Firstly, you now get to do the action as many times as the strength of the action shown to the right of the disc here. So the more you do an action, well, the more you get to do that action. So you could turn the contents of more than one press into champagne, obtain and allocate more workers, draw more grapes out of the bag, lay off multiple workers in one turn instead of one by one. Here's what makes the decision really meaty though. See these money symbols up here? They mean that whenever you do this action, you need to pay money, but it isn't a flat rate. Instead, you have to pay whatever the cost is to the left of your lowest action disc. And if you move every disc up once, you get an extra vintage bonus token, which boosts one of your actions. And if you move every disc up twice, you get the strength token from one of your actions so that each time you choose that action, you can do it as if the disc was one space higher. But wait, then it's more expensive to make champagne. There are so many reasons to deliberate about which action you should be choosing. This forces you to have to make really difficult choices all the time throughout the game. Should I do another sales action? But that's the last disc to move up, so it would make everything else more expensive. Maybe I should spend a few more turns getting more champagne while it's cheap. But then it's just building up and not selling anything. And this might make my seller action disc go all the way up to the top so it couldn't do it anymore and it would start to trigger the end of the game. The choices are just brilliant. Whenever you take the seller action to make champagne out of the contents of one of your presses, that champagne gets given a champagne value shown in these pentagons. This is really important for the final essential piece of the Dompier puzzle, the prestige. It's all about the prestige. There are four ways for your champagne to achieve prestige. You gain prestige whenever you make champagne of at least value 12, sell champagne of value 16, or make three champagnes in one go. Alternatively, you can also purchase a prestige for five precious coins. Whenever you gain prestige, you move up your prestige marker, earning your victory points at the end of the game. And you also flip over one of the prestige tokens in the champagne glass and choose one to take. 
You can choose to take a face down token if you don't like any of the face up ones, but then you won't know what bonus you'll be getting. And going up the prestige track doesn't just get you some victory points. It also increases your crown multiplier. Throughout the game, you can collect crowns on market cards that you collect for selling champagne. And the number of crowns you've collected is multiplied by your crown multiplier on the prestige track during the end of game scoring. There is a lot to talk about in Dom Pierre. Unfortunately, it just isn't possible for me to mention everything in the game here, but I've given you an overview of what to expect when playing Dom Pierre. Meaty choices, challenging trade-offs, and endless champagne. Again, I'm Mela. See you next time.